Iran, a mountainous, arid, and ethnically diverse country of southwestern Asia. The country maintains a rich and distinctive cultural and social continuity dating back to the Achaemenian period, which began in 550 BC. In recent decades, it has become known for its unique brand of Islamic Republic. Although the system of government was intended as a parliamentary democracy, persistent instability both at home and abroad have steered its slide into a more theocratic authoritarianism. In 2022, the states pushed to pacify economic unrest through repression prompted widespread and debilitating protests which were catalyzed in part by the death of Jaimasa Amini while she was in custody for improper attire. But I don't miss you, baby. So I stand up and speak. Iranian culture. An Iranian cultural renaissance in the late 8th century led to a reawakening of Persian literary culture. Though the Persian language was now highly Arabist, and in Arabic script, and native Persian Islamic dynasties began to appear with the rise of the Tahirids in the early 9th century. The region fell under the sway of successive waves of Persian, Turkish, and Mongol conquerors until the rise of the Safavids, who introduced Twelver Shiism as the official creed in the early 16th century. Over the following centuries, with the state-fostered rise of a Persian-based Shia clergy, a Baby, you synthesis was formed between Persian culture and Shia Islam that marked each indelibly with the tincture of the other. People of Iran. Ethnic groups. Iran is a culturally diverse society, and interethnic relations are generally amicable. The predominant ethnic and cultural group in the country consists of native speakers of Persian. But the people who are generally known as Persians are of mixed ancestry. And the country has important Turkic and Arab elements in addition to the Kurds, Balak, Bakhtiari, Lurs, and other smaller minorities. The Persians, Kurds, and speakers of other Indo-European languages in Iran are descendants of the Aryan tribes that began migrating from Central Asia into what is now Iran in the second millennium BCE. Those of Turkic ancestry are the progeny of tribes that appeared in the region, also from Central Asia, beginning in the 11th century C. And the Arab minority settled predominantly in the country's southwest following the Islamic conquests of the 7th century. Like the Persians, many of Iran's smaller ethnic groups chart their arrival into the region to ancient times. Don't wanna overthink it, baby. It's just me. Languages of Iran. Although Persian is the predominant and official language of Iran, a number of languages and dialects from three language families, Indo-European, Altaic, and Afro-Asiatic, are spoken. Baby, you Roughly three-fourths of Iranians speak one of the Indo-European languages. 
Slightly more than half the population speak a dialect of Persian, an Iranian language of the Indo-Iranian group. Literary Persian, the language's more refined variant, is understood to some degree by most Iranians. Persian is also the predominant language of literature, journalism, and the sciences. Less than one-tenth of the population speaks Kurdish. The Lurs and Bakhtiari both speak Luri, a language distinct from, but closely related to, Persian. Armenian, a single language of the Indo-European family, is spoken only by the Armenian minority. Religion of Iran The vast majority of Iranians are Muslims of the Itna Ashari or Twelver Shi branch, which is the official state religion. The Kurds and Turkmen are predominantly Sunni Muslims, but Iran's Arabs are both Sunni and Shi. Small communities of Christians, Jews, and Zoroastrians are also found throughout the country. The two cornerstones of Iranian Shism are the promise of the return of the divinely inspired 12th Imam. Muhammad al-Mahdi al-Hajja, whom the Shia believe to be the Mahdi, and the veneration of his martyred forebears. The absence of the Imam contributed indirectly to the development in modern Iran of a strong Shia clergy whose penchant for status, particularly in the 20th century, led to a proliferation of titles and honorifics unique in the Islamic world. The Shi clergy have been the predominant political and social force in Iran since the 1979 revolution. There is no concept of ordination in Islam. Hence, the role of clergy is played not by a priesthood but by a community of scholars, the ulama. To become a member of the Shi ulama, a male Muslim need only attend a traditional Islamic college, or madrasa. The main course of study in such an institution is Islamic jurisprudence. But a student need not complete his madrasa studies to become a faqi or jurist. In Iran such a low-level clergyman is generally referred to by the generic term mullah or akhund or, more recently, ruhani. To become a mullah, one need merely advance to a level of scholarly competence recognized by other members of the clergy. Mullahs staff the vast majority of local religious posts in Iran. Economy of Iran The most formidable hurdle facing Iran's economy remains its continuing isolation from the international community. Maybe. This isolation has hampered the short and long-term growth of its markets, restricted the country's access to high technology, and impeded foreign investment. Iran's isolation is a product both of the xenophobia of its more conservative politicians who fear post-imperial entanglements and sanctions imposed by the international community, particularly the United States, which accuses Iran of supporting international terrorism. The Iran and Libya Sanctions Act of 1996 expanded an existing U.S. embargo on the import of Iranian petroleum products to encompass extensive bans on investment both by U.S. and non-U.S. companies in Iran. These prohibitions included bans on foreign speculation in Iranian petroleum development, the export of high technology to Iran, and the import of a wide variety of Iranian products into the United States. Overtures by reform-minded Iranian politicians to open their country to foreign investment have met with limited success, but in the early 21st century U.S., sanctions remained in place. Don't 
agriculture, forestry, and fishing. Roughly one-third of Iran's total surface area is arable farmland, of which less than one-fourth, or one-tenth of the total land area, is under cultivation. Because of poor soil and lack of adequate water distribution in many areas, less than one-third of the cultivated area is irrigated. The rest is devoted to dry farming. The western and northwestern portions of the country have the most fertile soils. All these factors have contributed to low crop yields and poverty in rural areas. Further, after the 1979 revolution many agricultural workers claimed ownership rights and forcibly occupied large, privately owned farms where they had been employed. Fishing is also important, and Iran harvests fish both for domestic consumption Baby, you give me and for export, marketing their products fresh, salted, smoked, or canned. Sturgeon, bream, whitefish, salmon, mullet, carp, catfish, perch, and roach are caught in the Caspian Sea. Iran's most important fishery. More than 200 species of fish are found in the Persian Gulf. 150 of which are edible, including shrimps and prawns. Power. Until the 20th century, Iran's sources of energy were limited almost entirely to wood and charcoal. Petroleum. Natural gas and coal are now used to supply heat and produce the bulk of the country's electricity. A system of dams generates hydroelectric power. The Atomic Energy Organization of Iran was established in 1973 to construct a network of more than 20 nuclear power plants. By 1978 two 1,200 megawatt reactors near Bushehr on the Persian Gulf were near completion and were scheduled to begin operation early in 1980. But the revolutionary government cancelled the program in 1979. One of the two reactors was completed with Russian assistance and began operation in 2011 using nuclear fuel provided by Russia. There were no plans to complete the second reactor. The revelation in 2002 of a previously undeclared uranium enrichment facility under construction in Iran provoked suspicions that Iran was seeking to construct nuclear weapons. Since then, Iran's nuclear program, which officials contend is for peaceful purposes only, has been a major source of international tension and since 2006 has provoked escalating international sanctions against Iran. Thank you very much.